Shall we begin? Right? Sounds like we're in the arena or something. All right? The OSI model, Open Systems Interconnect. Again, conceptual blueprint. Don't go crazy. It's about two or three questions on your exam. Not a big deal. We need to know that there are seven layers from seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right? We need to know the layer name. Now, I'm sure in the books and or your teachers, professors, whatever, they've given you a mnemonic device to remember the layers. I like to use all people seem to need Domino's pizza. That's why I remember the OSI. I don't go application presentation session transfer. I don't do that. I say all people seem to need Domino's pizza. I put the first letter of each one. Now, okay, application presentation session transfer network and all that good stuff. All right. So you need to get you know some sort of a mnemonic device. You know our English teachers taught us that back in middle school, you know high school. You know these things that will help us remember other things. So all people seem to need data processing. That's kind of boring. So Domino's pizza. That's pretty cool. So that's why I like to use that. So seven layers, and each layer has its name. So you need to make sure that you know that. Let me, uh, yeah, that's right there. Okay. All right. Now, the physical layer. All the, all the letters that you see in red, we'll get that in a little bit. All right. But these are all the layers. These, this is everything that works on these layers. Okay. Uh, each layer has its purpose. It's just like a, you're like a book explains to you. Each layer has a particular job to do. The layer below it, doesn't just needs to make sure that the layer above it does its its part because it's going to and this is key this is key the layer below will encapsulate the layer above that is key right there the layer below will encapsulate the layer above all right so these are your seven layers right there okay and each layer has a different purpose. You see there, there's different protocols and different things that each layer is in charge of. That's why they break it apart that way to make it where when vendors create their NIC cards or you're creating IPv6, you can do whatever you want to one layer. It's not going to damage or hurt the other layer whatsoever. You're focused on that one particular layer. As far as we're concerned, all right, why can't I ping? What and why I'm not getting any ARP when you're checking with your certain with your devices, your flukes or whatever it is that you're using to test ARP. Right? ARP is as you can see works at layer two. So these are things that when you use it out there, gives you an idea, hey, what's going on? It, the difference between an unreachable and a request timeout. So the OSI is here just for that particular purpose. All the models are. The TCP IP model, the uh, Cisco three layer model, they're there just to give us an idea of how things should flow. Where should we place or how, in the Cisco three layer model where they say the top router, that's your core router, you don't mess with that. You want things to go fast, right? Switching information back and forth. So it just gives us an idea how things should work. But definitely, these are all your layers. These are the different things that work on each layers. And you see that, and we're going to get into the next video. Like I said, I've turned this course into bite-sized morsels. All right. You have the upper three layers and the lower four layers, which we'll, we'll talk about. All right. And each one of those has this particular function. You see you have data, data, data. So nothing gets segmented until finally it reaches the transport layer. And then it moves on from there. So again, don't go crazy with the OSI model. It's seven layers. Application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical. If you learned it from the bottom up, that's fine. As long as you get it in the right order. You need to make sure that, hey, layer two is the data link layer. Hey, the data link layer has two sub layers, the LLC and the MAC. Things like that. That's the kind of things you need to be aware of. All right, that it's just a logical understanding the, as the verbiage in your book, the conceptual blueprint all right, for us to understand 
the flow of information and what happens at each layer up to a certain point. If you're going to be an electrical engineer, if you're going to design a new routing protocol, if you're going to design a new route, um, route head protocol, uh, whatever it is that you know you want to go ahead and you know design here, a new gateway or what have you, this is something that you need to get really deep into. But if you're not, if you're just basically saying going out there into the field and you're testing stuff back and forth, all you really need to know is like, hey, I'm not getting this, I'm not getting that, why isn't that? Okay, it's probably a layer two issue, a layer three issue, a layer one issue. And that's what you're going to see. Because in the router, when you're inside the router and you do a show IP int brief, it either shows you up, up, good to go, up, down, layer two, down, down, layer one. Administratively down, that's your problem. You forgot to turn it on. But this is how we would use that. Okay, physical error, down, down. That means something didn't get plugged in correctly or you didn't put an IP or something happened. All right, so that's how we would use these layers. So know definitely the order of the layers, know the numbers of the layers. The mnemonic device, all people seem to need Domino's Pizza. But now in the next uh, lesson, we're going to get into actually, we're going to separate the upper layers from the lower layers and we'll give explanations on those. I'll see you in the next session.